us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Merry Christmas! It is Christmas Eve. What a joyful night. Thank you for being here this evening. We are Martin Luther Lutheran Church. We are gathering to celebrate the Christ child, that God is in our world. The light of Christ has not gone up, but only grows brighter. We appreciate you taking time on a busy, hectic week, right? What a crazy week this is, but we come for worship. We come on Christmas Eve to hear the songs, to hear the readings, to be reminded of the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, born in the stable, laid in a manger. We're so glad you're here for worship tonight. This is our Christmas Eve service. We will be having a Christmas Eve experience outside there in the parking lot. If you're interested, we'll be having that at 5, 6, 7, and 8 o'clock tonight. Hopefully you all sign up for a spot for that. But we're glad you are here. We are glad you're here for worship on this incredibly holy night, this magical night of light and joy. We hope you can be gathered with your family and loved ones. If you can't, remember that we are together, even if we are separated by distance. So we appreciate you being here with all your loved ones tonight. Let us gather for worship now. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. We saw the Word's glory, the favor and position a parent gives an only child, filled with grace, filled with truth. As we light the Christ candle, we honor Jesus as the light of the world. Though many things try to cover our witness, the light of Emmanuel, God with us, brings respite, provides comfort and companionship, and fills us with love and peace that is not dependent upon our current situation. Christ is born, alleluia. Emmanuel, God with us, in the weeks to come and in the new year to come, fill us with the light of Christ, the love of God, and the power and passion of the Holy Spirit. Ignite hope, peace, joy, love, and light on the wick of our lives, so that we may shine into our world holy, unconditional warmth and light to all. Amen.
Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He He is is the the light light no darkness darkness can can overcome. At the darkest night, we gather to celebrate the great light of our salvation. With With the the heavenly hosts we sing, Glory to God in the highest heaven. In Christ, God's word is made flesh and lives among us. With With the the shepherds, shepherds, we will tell of the wonders we have seen and heard. May the grace and light of Christ be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. God of new birth, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light, your Son. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and proclaim the good news, like the shepherds did at the first Christmas, of your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. What child shall come this lonely night and bring God's love forever? Shine in light and sing with joy together. This 
Second reading is from the book of Psalms, the 96th chapter. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. The word of the Lord. What's in Pastor's bag? Yeah, what's in Pastor's bag? What's in Pastor's bag? Yeah, what's in Pastor's bag? I don't know what's in there. What's in Pastor's bag? Then then. Jazz hands. Hi, I'm Pastor Hans. I'm Co Pastor Ross. And here we are. Merry Christmas! It's Christmas Eve. Oh yeah. Exciting, huh? So we got special. What's in Pastor's bag? Watch, feel that. What do you think is inside there? Hmm. Hmm. What do you think? Oh, Ooh, scissors. Scissors. Let's show the camera that. Your scissors from school. So, mm -hmm. what do you do for with scissors, Wes, that is school appropriate mm. and home appropriate? If you have, like, a home assignment where you have to, like, cut and glue. Yes, cut and glue. That's right. So, we're going to do just that. So, we're going to cut something up and we're going to make something special. So, hold on to this. And we're going to start cutting. It's called... Snowflakes. So we're gonna cut paper snowflakes. So you're gonna cut along the green line. You see that? I have some here too that I'm gonna to cut too. Be very careful. Just cut along the green line.
So we made some snowflakes with paper so we get to open it up. So we gently open this up. I think there's another part here to open. That's another part to open. And then you unfold all of it. So, Wes, this was one that you were cutting. You might not think much of it at first until you realized there's the star and here are the camels going towards the star. And who did we hear in the story going towards the star? The shepherds. The shepherds, yes. And also, who rode the camels? The three wise men. The three wise men, that's right. So the shepherds and the three wise men were all looking for the star. And when they got there, so this might not think much of this one. Let's open this up and take a look at this. Oh, I know what this is. What is that? Already. What is it? The angels. The angels. If I can remember correct, the angels told the shepherds that, like, good news. There was a baby coming. Not just any baby. Jesus. Jesus. And what's so special about this baby Jesus? Is that he's the son of God. So I made one earlier with, I probably, I did several takes of this, so I hope this came out well. So let me unfold this thing. So we have the star in the middle, and we have Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus and the Tiffany, and it's a giant snowflake. Hmm. So when they got to the manger, what did they see, mister? All they, they saw Jesus and them. Yeah, Jesus and Mary and Joseph. That's right. So I did that because I looked on the internet. I kind of did some cheating. Hmm. Looked on the internet for answers of how to make a snowflake manger scene, and there were several on there, and this is the one that I made. And this is the one that Wes made with the star with the camels. Unfold that star a little bit more. That's exciting. So when the story the angels proclaimed, they had their trumpets, the angels told the shepherds and the wise men. Well, the angels really went to the, the shepherds and then they followed the star and the wise men also followed the star to the manger for this amazing baby Jesus. And that's what we celebrate tonight, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for today. Thank you for today. And especially tomorrow. And especially tomorrow. Christmas Day. Christmas Day. Is when we celebrate. It's when we celebrate. The birth of Jesus. The birth of Jesus. Your son. Your son. Our Savior. Our Savior. Thank you for that gift. Thank you for that gift. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee, to Judea, 
to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, and you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Did you get to have your favorite Christmas Eve tradition this year? Many of us have favorite traditions for Christmas and Christmas Eve, but we may not get to them this year. We may not have the large family gatherings. We don't get to gather in the sanctuary space this year in person for Christmas Eve. So I thank you for being here for Christmas Eve service. But did you get to have your favorite Christmas Eve traditions? Every family is different. Every family has different traditions. Some people like to open one gift on Christmas Eve. Some people open several gifts on Christmas Eve. In our house, one of my favorite Christmas Eve traditions is Pastor Kristen and I make Greek food. Kristen's grandma was Greek, and so I called her Greeky, and we make Greek food on Christmas Eve 
in honor and memory of that. And it's just delicious too. Another Christmas Eve tradition that's not my favorite is I usually get sick. I usually get sick on Christmas Eve. There's a great picture that Mike Ellis took a few years ago of me sitting down between services with my hand in my hand, my face in my hands, just exhausted between services. And that happens. Many of us may be feeling tired and sick right now. It's exhausting, especially this year. Another Christmas Eve tradition is after the last service, I go home, my kids are usually in bed, Pastor Chris and I are talking a little bit, and then I cut my hair. Well, because of COVID, I did that earlier this year, so I cut my hair ahead of time, so it's super short. But those are some of the things we do every year on Christmas Eve. The thing about your favorite Christmas Eve traditions, I think a lot of them are probably gathered for church, right? Coming in this space to see the light, to see the family, the friends, many of the people in the congregation who grew up here, many of the people in this church have been coming to Christmas Eve their whole life in this congregation. It's wonderful to see. We have the music that we're all used to. We have the band who plays the wonderful music that we love. We have the candles at the end of service we pass around. We will have some of those things for the Christmas Eve experience outside tonight, but we don't get to have the usual Christmas Eve here. It's been a real joy for the last 10 years to be part of this congregation. You all have welcomed me and my family in as one of your own, and we thank you for that. I love on Christmas Eve getting to see so many people and so many of your families come. I love to see Rhoda and all of her kids and grandkids from out of state come in because they love to see her. I love to see all of the Krantz family and the Drake family. And a little thing about the Drake family is that on Christmas Eve, they usually always have a picture in front of the Christmas tree right over here. And quite often, I get to take the picture. Now, it sounds a little weird and selfish, but I enjoy being able to take the family picture for the Drake family in front of the Christmas tree every year. It's kind of exciting because it's my little joy to connect with them on Christmas Eve. We don't get to do that this year. There's so many things that we love about Christmas Eve we just don't get to do. <clears throat> and it's hard. This is not the Christmas Eve we wanted. This is not how we want to spend our Christmas. But we go on. We do the best we can. We make do is with whatever we have, with who we're with, however possible we can make do for Christmas Eve, even if this is not what we expected, if this is not what we would like for Christmas Eve. I think Mary would probably think of the same thing on the very first Christmas Eve. She's large, she's pregnant, she is very pregnant, she is so ready. She walked on foot or on donkey from their home in Nazareth all the way down to Bethlehem over three days journey on foot and donkey. And she's probably thinking, God, what is up with this? You said I'd be favored and you gave me a savior, a king born, and this is what's happening? Mary probably thought that the birth experience would be a lot more glamorous or probably even hygienic than it was. We know the story, right? We heard in the Luke gospel reading a little bit ago, there was no room for her at the end. And so Mary had to give birth in the stable. They placed baby Jesus in the manger with swaddling cloth. This is not the kind of birth a royal king, a savior should have. Kings are born in palaces. Saviors are born in great pomp and circumstance. Mary must be thinking, God, are you sure about this? This is not what I signed up for. This is not what I thought would happen. A few notes on this. The manger is, we think of the lovely manger with the animals. It's really the feeding trough. Now, when I think of a feeding trough, I think of Tractor Supply Company, a large galvanized bin for goats and sheep and cows to eat out of. And that is what a manger is. In that part of the world, in that time, it would have been carved out of stone or been made with clay and brick and mortar, what they had around. Again, it was just a feeding pen for animals. But that's all they had. They had to make do with what they had and where they're at. So they placed the Savior, baby Jesus, into this feeding trough because they had no proper crib for him. Now we may be thinking about the classic children's pageant where Mary and Joseph come up from their donkey and they go to this inn. And then we usually have a cardboard inn or a wooden stable theme that says inn on it. And we think about that. And a funny story, my brother-in-law played the innkeeper one year and Mary and Joseph came up and he only had one line, my brother-in-law, and his line was to say, no room in the inn. But when Mary and Joseph went up to him, he said, sure, come on inside. He felt bad for Mary. 
Now we might be thinking, what kind of a horrible innkeeper would turn away a pregnant woman sore on her feet at this time of year? Well, the word in is probably not the best word for this. Uh, in the ancient world, this word for in is actually not always used for in. It could mean several different things. And it could mean what most likely was, was the large gathering room or the guest room. We know from archaeology that Jewish houses were built in kind of a square shape, rectangular shape, and the inner part, if they had enough money, was used for gatherings, for welcoming for guests. And so this inn is, would really been like a hotel or a motel like we have today, but most likely it would have been the guest room. If you think in your house today, if you have an extra bedroom, maybe it's an office or a playroom or a Lego room, whatever it might be. That guest room is what we're talking about here. So if you have family come from out of town, where do they stay? They usually stay in the guest room, right? Now, we're good people. We don't kick our family out to stay at a hotel during Christmas. We welcome them into the guest room. I had an Old Testament professor, a New Testament professor talk about this one time. And it was interesting to hear them say because they said they probably weren't welcome, not because they're not welcoming, loving, hospitable people, but because of the Jewish tradition, the law, when a woman gave birth in a house, everyone in the house was made ritually unclean. That was the custom of the Jewish law at the time. And so they were probably not welcome. There was no room for them in the guest room, possibly because there are too many people or because they couldn't be in the same house as a woman giving birth because they had priestly duties or they just took the law so seriously. And so where did they go? I've been to Bethlehem and it was interesting there because they have several places. The large church and the nativity in Bethlehem is a beautiful, huge church. But you go inside and you have to go down several layers, several stairs, because it's deep down the grotto there where they think it could have been. Now, when thinking about this, if the family had stables or barn, really it would be less of a building and more of a cave or an under room underneath the house, like a crawl space or even a cave if your house was close to that. And in Bethlehem today, there's the huge church nativity, but there's also a, a small cave of the nativity as well. And that's probably historically more accurate of a barn or stable at that time was just a cave where the people, their family would put the animals for night, would have a bench across or a bar across, or maybe a shepherd would stay there with them. This is probably what Mary was experiencing. They thought they would get the guest room, but they didn't get the guest room. So where do they have to go? To the cave or that small crawl space, wherever they kept the animals at night. They had no proper room for them. They had no proper space for them. And they had to lay the baby Jesus down into a feeding trough for the animals. This is an unusual kind of birth. This is an unusual kind of thing. Why would the King of Kings, the Lord Almighty, have the Savior be born this way? This is not like how other ancient kings and rulers were born. But I think that's the point. I think that's exactly the point of this gospel reading, that Jesus was not like Caesar. Jesus was not like King Herod. Jesus is not like the elite and wealthy and powerful even we know today. He was born in a stable. He was born in the family cave under their house. He was born in a place where, why would a king be born there? It's dirty, it's cramped, it's full of animals. It's not the palace because he's not a king like we know kings. Jesus came as this little helpless baby, born a king, born a savior. And it would be so different, such a radically new thing that God was doing that God had to show it in a different way. It was probably not pleasant at all for the experience of Mary and Joseph, but this is what God provided for intentionally. And I think it's important we remember about God providing. Throughout the story, God provided the herald, the angels went to the shepherds. So they got to announce and the shepherds got to come and proclaim Christ born. And God also wrote it in the stars in the sky. God made the star shine above Bethlehem so that the three wise men, the three magi, could come from Persia, from the east, and to give homage, to pay respect to this newborn king. These pagan astrologers could come from far away and find exactly where he is because the star. Now, you all are probably well familiar that this year we have a Christmas star. We have Jupiter and Saturn lining up very close together, making it all look like almost one giant star, very bright in the sky, so close together. So close together, in fact, this has not happened since 1226 AD. That's amazing to think about. Almost 800 years ago, 
has been since this star has been here and is happening right now, tonight even, just like that Christmas star over Bethlehem. We have this beautiful sight. And I think it's important to remember that because God provides. This may not be the Christmas we want or hope for or even enjoy all the time, but this is the Christmas that God is providing for us. God is writing it in the stars with this beautiful Christmas star, aligning the planets, aligning the universe to show a sign. God is doing this to remind us. God does not always do things our way. God does not always do things as we want, but she does things in a tricky way, in a clever way, to show who is really in charge, that God is God and we are not, and that God's Son is born unto us, a Savior, a Redeemer, born in a trough, born in a stable, placed in the manger. This king is unlike any king we've known because God provides a new way. God shines a light in the world in a way we never expected or saw coming, but God provides and God wrote it in the stars for us to see. Behold, the light of Christ is coming into the world. See that God is good. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God and he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Silent night, May the God who has called you out of darkness to be servants of light grant you the joy of the angels, the eagerness to share the good news like the shepherds, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Creator, Son, and Spirit, 
Bless you all, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for being here for worship on this holy night, this magical night. Now, we may be missing some of your favorite themes, like the candle lighting or certain songs. So we actually will have some of those at the Christmas Eve experience outside at 5, 6, 7, and 8 o'clock tonight. Hopefully you reserved a spot. We will be having electric candles in the cars. We'll actually be having the light of Christ in the cars outside tonight if you're interested. And we'll have some of the hymns and carols we did not get start during the service. We'll get to those tonight and also on Sunday coming up for service of carols and lessons. Now, we do remember that we have been incredibly blessed by God this year, that God provides, and we are incredibly blessed. And so it's our joy to give back. So every penny from the Christmas Eve offering will be going out to help with Lee Summit Social Services and One Good Meal. So if you have an offering during tonight for the Christmas Eve experience, or if you turn it in or electronically or mail in, please mark it for Christmas Eve. So we know that. So every penny that gets brought in for Christmas Eve, we get to give out to help feed the hungry and help those in need. What a joy it is. We thank you for your support of Martin Luther Lutheran Church during the year. We could not be doing this without your support, your prayers, your presence. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting the congregation. For Pastor Kristen and I from our family, Merry Christmas. We miss you all and we hope we can gather again in person soon for worship. May you have a blessed and joyful Christmas Day. Amen.